Hello everybody and welcome to this microeconomic video on factors affecting price elasticity of demand. Firstly, I'm just going to show you how to draw price elasticity of demand as a demand curve on a diagram. So firstly, our diagram on the left shows an elastic price elasticity of demand. And an elastic price elasticity of demand is when demand will change a lot when there is a change in price. So in this case, our price rises from P1 to P2. And at P1, our demand, if we really cross them down, was Q1. And at P2, if we really cross them down, our demand has fallen to Q2. And that's quite a big fall. So therefore, this demand curve, this gently sloping demand curve, it doesn't have a very steep gradient, shows an elastic price elasticity of demand. However, the curve on the right, with a very steep demand curve shows an inelastic good. Now an inelastic good was one where the demand did not change that much when there was a change in price. So in this case we've had the same price increase from P1 to P2 but now if we read across and down and look at our change in demand we've only had a small drop in demand from Q1 to Q2. So therefore demand is not that responsive and there has not been that much of a drop in demand. Demand has not changed that much. Next, we move on to the factors affecting whether a good is inelastic or elastic. So we'll go in a clockwise motion, starting from whether it is a necessity or not. If our good is a necessity, so we need it, it is likely that the price elasticity of demand for the good will be inelastic. Because even if price changes, we still need to buy it, so therefore demand won't change that much. Next, we have the number of substitute goods. So if a good has lots of possible replacements, so for example in this country you don't have to buy bread anymore like you had to hundreds of years ago, you now have alternatives, you have things like rice, you have things like pita bread, you have things like naan bread. So therefore, bread will be an elastic good because if the price changes, demand will drop a lot because that demand will go towards a different good. People can stop buying bread and go and buy a different one. So if a good has lots of substitute goods, it will be elastic. Next, we have the time period being examined. So, uh, I'm going to use iPhones as the example here. In the short term, if the price of an iPhone were to jump by £20, people who were already planning on buying iPhones would say, oh, it's just an extra £20, I'll still go and buy it. So in the short term, this increase in price won't lead to a big drop in demand. So therefore, the good will be inelastic. But in the long term, people who are now considering iPhones will say, hang on a second, I could get a Samsung Galaxy for £10 cheaper now that the iPhone price has gone up. So therefore, in the long term, it's likely that this increase of price will lead to a bigger drop in demand. So therefore, in the long term, iPhones will be elastic, price elastic. Next, we have the width of market definition. So this means whether I am... Uh, this is essentially how many substitutes I'm comparing my good to. As in, if I were looking at the price elasticity of demand of Land Rovers, am I comparing that just to the price elasticity of demand of Range Rovers or to all other cars? And next, we have our geographic location. So I'm going to use our non bread example again here. So in Britain, bread will be an elastic good because it has lots of substitutes. But in parts of Asia, Naan bread will be an inelastic good because it's a necessity. It's one of the only staple foods they have, naan bread and rice. So therefore, in Asia, in Asian countries, naan bread and rice will be inelastic goods because there aren't many substitutes to them. Whereas in Britain, bread would be an elastic good because it has lots of substitutes. 